morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and I've got a detailed weather forecast update on the severe thunderstorm situation through southeast Queensland. Severe storms are possible on Friday, Saturday and Sunday with Saturday potentially being one of the greatest outbreaks that we have seen of severe thunderstorms not only this season but in the last couple of seasons. I'll touch on the general weather scene across northern Australia as well, rainfall for North Queensland and also for the Northern Territory and WA but this will be a very heavy update on the southeast Queensland side of things so let's just get stuck straight into things. If you're brand new to the channel please do consider subscribing but for southeast Queensland. The severe thunderstorms are on starting tomorrow night. Let's flick it over to the forecast and you can see very little activity is expected throughout the course of today in the Brisbane or the Gold Coast City area but a couple of severe thunderstorms are now possible onto the northern side of the Sunshine Coast into the Fraser Coast and through the South Burnett Forecast District. We're not expecting anything too crazy today. Instability values are going to be there for some potentially strong thunderstorms. We're talking about these values here definitely approaching four figures which is enough to get severe thunderstorms off the ground but overall conditions aren't anything uh, too spectacular but definitely keep an eye on the skies later this afternoon and this evening there are some decent conditions there it is a highly sheared environment as we normally do expect for this time of the year we do also have that dry slot into the mid-levels of the atmosphere and there is that instability in the atmosphere the only thing holding these thunderstorms back is that instability and the fact that we also have a little bit of high cloud coverage now moving through this part of Queensland so I don't expect anything special tonight but the chance is there and I'll keep tabs on things in case things do go a little bit crazy later this afternoon and this evening tomorrow is a little bit more more interesting. We are expecting some stronger thunderstorm activity, particularly outside of Maryborough, north of Gympie, and then up towards Harvey Bay, Bundaberg, and then through the Capricornia coastline, through Agnes Water and Gladstone, up towards Rockhampton and Ogmore, and thunderstorm chances extending as far north as Mackay. Again, high levels of instability coming through onto the coastline. You can see these values here approaching 2,000. That is more than plenty to get severe thunderstorms off the ground, and some good values are also expected a little bit further inland. And having a look at a convective sounding as well, dry slot uh, here, highly sheared environment up into the upper levels. You can see strong winds in the upper levels and it is going to be a warm day with lots of humidity. So definitely could see something pretty significant tomorrow afternoon and evening, particularly along the coast of the Capricornia coast and then south towards Maryborough. Anything further south than that, so that includes the Sunshine Coast and then down towards Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Chances are very minimal for severe thunderstorm activity. But yeah, tomorrow is looking like a pretty potent setup. Friday afternoon could bring us something pretty special anywhere between Rockhampton down to Harvey Bay and about 80 or 90 kilometres inland from those locations. It will be one to watch, that's for sure. And forecast models have been pretty favourite, have been favouring some pretty significant thunderstorm activity through a couple of these places in the last couple of days. But if you think Thursday and Friday have good chances, wait till you see Saturday. Lots of thunderstorm activity is expected through Saturday. We will have that high cloud coverage early, which could jeopardise parts of the outbreak, particularly earlier on in the afternoon. But big thunderstorms are not just possible, but pretty much expected now on Saturday afternoon and evening. This goes to the Brisbane City area, all of southeast Queensland, the scenic rim and then up through the Sunshine Coast into the south and the North Burnett Forecast Districts, and then inland to the Maranoma uh, Forecast District as well, through the Granite Belt and Darling Downs, and then inland from the Capricornia coastline as far north as Emerald and Dingo. Very widespread and extensive thunderstorm chances, with a lot of these thunderstorms now expected to go severe warned. These thunderstorms are going to start off pretty early in the afternoon, all things considered. We've got the chance starting from about 2 or 2.30. Uh, the chance for severe thunderstorms will really begin to build after about 3.30 into the Brisbane City area, the best chance for severe thunderstorms thunderstorm activity will be between about three o'clock out to about five o'clock. Severe thunderstorms will then begin to head progressively further north. They'll develop a lot further inland as well after about five o'clock in the evening and then they'll continue their run up the Sunshine Coast where potentially severe or supercellular thunderstorm activity is expected through Saturday afternoon and evening. Conditions are extremely conducive for severe thunderstorms. This is definitely one of the best severe thunderstorm setups that I've seen in my few years of tracking these outbreaks here. Very high convective available potential energy values are right through the board across south and southeastern Queensland, well above 2,000 and in some spots approaching 3,000. That is some incredible instability for this part of Queensland. And normally when we see values like that, there's not an awful lot standing in the way of significant severe thunderstorm development. Again, dry slot in the middle of the atmosphere, a highly sheared environment and extreme humidity all the way through as well, which means we're expecting those high precipitation storm modes like what we saw last weekend, a lot more of them considering there is a lot more instability and the hail risk is also substantial greater. We've got steep lapse rates, which in meteorology favours supercell thunderstorms and extremely large hailstones. So we've got some really potent setups. This is jet fuel stuff for severe thunderstorm activity. And I would just like to say that I'm putting all of Southeast Queensland on notice now for significant severe thunderstorm activity. So Gold Coast, Brisbane, Caboolture, Maroochydore, Sunshine Coast, up towards Noosa, Gympie, Tyro, and then north towards Harvey Bay, inland to Goomeri, uh, Kinuroi, uh, Toowoomba, those sort of locations, Warwick, and then again further inland up towards 
towards Chinchilla to Room, and then up towards Biloela and uh, Rolleston, all looking at the chance of significant severe thunderstorm activity on Saturday. Those chances are obviously increasing as you get closer to the coastline, and I reckon our strongest storms are going to be similar to where they were last weekend through the Brisbane CBD, but likely a little bit further north, so Wyvernhoe Outlook and then into the southern parts of the Sunshine Coast. Sanford Valley again on notice towards the northwest of Brisbane, and then up in towards the southern parts of the Sunshine Coast, Glasshouse Mountains, Maroochydore, Caloundra, Coolum, and then up towards Noosa, all expecting severe thunderstorm activity chances to be at their highest. The Gold Coast also has a substantial chance of a severe thunderstorm as well, uh, and it looks like they've got their best chance that they've seen all season for significant severe thunderstorm activity around the Gold Coast too. And same deal for Brisbane. Last weekend's outbreak was substantial, but we're expecting more to come through this weekend. My general take on these thunderstorms right now is more of them compared to what we were looking at last weekend, but they will be less severe. They'll be less strong by about a factor of about 20% or 30%. So not as crazy as what we saw on the weekend, particularly through the CBDs of Brisbane and the Gold Coast, but there will be a lot more of them. They're going to be a lot more frequent and they could be a lot larger as well in terms of area and how much people they impact. So it is definitely one to be watching. Sunday is a very significant setup for severe thunderstorm activity. Like I said, we do have that high cloud cover in the morning, which could get things off to a pretty sluggish and slow start. So I do definitely expect these forecast models that we're looking at right now to be on the aggressive side of things, just considering that high cloud coverage. But all major forecast models are now very much on board with significant thunderstorm activity. And like I said, a very high chance of supercell thunderstorms, which means the risk of damaging to locally destructive winds, intense rainfall accumulations over a short period of time, large to potentially giant hailstones, and again, a high risk compared to normal for tornadoes is all on the table now. It's all on the cards for Saturday afternoon. It could be a nasty outbreak. And this also carries over into the northeast of New South Wales. If you've been paying attention, you'll see that northeast New South Wales is also looking at very similar chances, particularly north of Grafton and Yamba, up through Lismore, up towards Murrawillumba, and then inland towards Monalboo, and then out towards Woodenbong, Deepwater, Glen Innes, all got the chance of significant severe thunderstorm activity on Saturday afternoon, and also the chance of thunderstorm activity extending right down the New South Wales coastline as far south as the Hunter region as well, and even a few thunderstorm chances expected to fire up around Sydney and Wollongong inland from the Illawarra coastline. There's going to be a lot of thunderstorm activity through the eastern Australia, and you can see this is a quintessential picture uh, for this time of the year for an October outbreak that is going to fire up on Saturday afternoon and evening. Exciting stuff, particularly for those that do need the rainfall it has been a dry picture over the last couple of months. Brisbane has seen some pretty good rainfall accumulations and some great rainfall accumulations around the Gold Coast and the northeastern coast of New South Wales, particularly on Tuesday, where up to 125 millimetres fell for a number of locations. But this is just going to bring more much needed rainfall as well. And like I said, high precipitation storm modes means that that rainfall is going to be exacerbated compared to what we do normally see in thunderstorms, especially at this time of the year. A quintessential November outbreak and a great start to the official storm season of 2025-26 that's for sure. Pushing things forward, you can see they just keep going right through Saturday night and then into early Sunday morning. We're expecting these thunderstorms to temporarily clear off. The chance of thunderstorms increases once again for the northern parts of the Sunshine Coast into the Fraser Coast and Capricornia Coastline through Sunday afternoon and then evening. And again, a very potent setup for severe thunderstorm activity and potentially some significant severe thunderstorm activity as well. Another pretty reasonably wind sheared environment, which means strong severe thunderstorms and organized severe thunderstorms is a possibility. Not to mention the fact we've got that dry slot as well and again some steep lapse rates which means that the uh, possibility for another potentially potent severe thunderstorm outbreak a little bit further north of Brisbane not so much impacting the Brisbane area but like I said north of Brisbane on Sunday the 2nd of November is now also a great possibility too and this carries over later on into the evening into the southern parts of the Capricornia coastline wind shear values are a lot higher up there as well and it looks like conditions are just overall a little bit more favorable so we may see some strong thunderstorm activity on Sunday afternoon inland from the Capricornia coastline as well great instant Instability values once again. In fact, excellent instability values coming down here into the 3000 ballpark, which is more than enough to get significant severe thunderstorms off the ground. Now, this instability is continuing on the forecast for Monday. And again, the chance of thunderstorms is going to be there on Monday. It just looks like Monday is going to be a little bit more of a dry picture through parts of Queensland. You can see those humidity values are a little bit lower through Monday morning and Monday afternoon. A massive dry slot in the environment, though, and again, very highly wind sheared environment. It means that Monday is going to be a bit of a day to watch. We may see some strong thunderstorms 
thunderstorm activity through parts of uh, southeastern Queensland, most likely over the ranges and away from the coastline. But Monday could be, again, another day to watch. It's going to be a multi-day severe thunderstorm outbreak, put it that way. Tuesday, rainfall and thunderstorms expected to set the stage across southeast Queensland, not like what we saw on Tuesday, but the same sort of weather event as that low-pressure system moves through. We are expecting much less in the way of rainfall, though maybe about 20 or 25 millimetres instead of 125 millimetres. But it's still much needed rainfall, and it will just fill up the tanks of people that miss out on these thunderstorms over the next couple of days. So overall, some very good news and excited to see it. And then finally, a little bit of break from thunderstorm activity as we get out towards the 4th and the 5th of November, and then returning these severe thunderstorms at around the 8th or the 9th of November for at least another couple of days, and potentially some strong ones on the forecast now around that time as well. This is a significant setup across southeast Queensland, very typical for this time of the year, and it is something to keep very close tabs on at this point in time. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I'm going to do my best to get through all of them today. There won't be a second update today because I'm very confident that this forecast is going to be reliable, but from this point onwards, we're running twice daily updates on these severe thunderstorms, and if things really do get out of hand, like I said, live coverage will be uh, run as well. So make sure you are subscribed, following the Facebook page as well, and leave a like on the video while you're at it, just to make sure that you are up to date with the most current information across Southeast Queensland, because there is a lot to take in, that's for sure. Now, last night we had some good thunderstorms across North Queensland and a great thunderstorm blew through Cairns very early on in the morning and lots of lightning activity towards the north of Cairns, but more importantly, some much needed rainfall around the Cairns City area. It absolutely pelted down around two o'clock in the morning and uh, some places have picked up between 25 to 50 millimetres of rainfall, some much needed rainfall as well. It is starting to look a little bit dry up in pockets of far north Queensland. Some great severe thunderstorm activity though, all things considered over the last couple of days. We had some excellent hail outside of uh, Atherton in the last couple of days and it looked Looks like, again, severe thunderstorms are going to be a weak possibility later this afternoon and this evening. We're not expecting anything too crazy compared to what we have been looking at for the last couple of days, but over the Atherton Tablelands, the chances are going to be there once again for some small to potentially large hailstones around that two to three centimetre size, maybe up towards four centimetres in a few spots later this afternoon. Uh, and then some heavy to locally intense rainfall accumulations as well, accompanied by a lot of lightning and potentially some strong winds. The chances for thunderstorms is, as mentioned, rather isolated, and we're not talking about a widespread or wide-ranging uh, amount of thunderstorms and they're not going to impact as many people as what they have over the last couple of days but it's still a feature on the forecast models and certainly something to pay close attention to at this point in time. Uh, today it could bring another round of potentially severe thunderstorms up there. Now thunderstorms are also going to be a possibility as we head out towards the last day of October but again an even weaker chance compared to where they are today and we don't have any rainfall firing up yet on the far north Queensland forecast. We do have a little bit coming through on the extreme northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula but in terms of solid rainfall and shower events. It's just that speckled stuff coming here and there out of the southeast. Nothing in the way of significant rainfall coming through until at least the 10th of November and then possibly a little bit further uh, beyond that is when the rainfall is going to begin to pipe up. But around the 20th to the 25th, the Madden Julian Oscillation is going to come close to northern Queensland and that will uh, create a significant uptick in uh, shower and rainfall activity and likely play a part in providing far north Queensland with its second uh, wet season deluge. The first, of course, being back in mid-September where they had that near record-breaking or in fact in a few spots, record-breaking amount of rainfall overnight. So the next deluge coming by the looks of things out towards late November at this point in time, but I don't expect anything too crazy from it just looking at it right now. And as we talked about yesterday, lots of thunderstorm activity through the NT and parts of northwestern WA through the Kimberley region. That's pretty typical for this time of the year. It doesn't really need much of an introduction, but thunderstorms are being very frequent and uh, quite impressive across parts of the NT and Western Australia. Nothing this morning compared to what we were looking at yesterday morning, but again, good thunderstorms forecast to fire up this afternoon and this evening across the Northern Territory and also parts of the Kimberley region. Thunderstorms are then going to become a little bit more Kimberley focused as we get out through the first couple of days of November. You can see lots of storm activity expected through the Kimberley region. Uh, and that is, again, very typical for this time of the year. Pulse thunderstorm activity in the afternoon. Some of them do be, end up becoming severe with uh, some strong wind gusts and locally heavy rainfall, particularly if they stall over a location. But for the most part, these are just outback thunderstorms. They look a lot more intense on the radar imagery because they do have those big raindrops in them, but they're pretty sporadic, all things considered. And normally they don't don't drop anything crazy in the way of rainfall, particularly at this time of the year. Once we start getting out towards mid-November is when the real rainfall accumulations begin to pick up uh, from these thunderstorms in the NT and the northern parts of WA. A big cutoff low pressure system is also a possibility through WA, which will then go on to provide southeastern Australia with some much needed rainfall accumulations, but it could also spark a severe thunderstorm outbreak on Tuesday or Wednesday next week through parts of southwestern WA. It looks like those thunderstorms, though, are going to occur a lot further inland, so well to the northwest of uh, northeast of 
Kalgoorlie and also a lot further inland into the northern parts of the wheat belt if they do even develop. There's very low convective available potential energy values and it doesn't look like an overly conducive setup for severe thunderstorms but it is still a possibility and as mentioned that will then go on to provide southeastern Australia with some much needed rainfall around the 6th and the 7th of November and also some rainfall coming through on the 2nd and the 3rd of November as well in towards southern Victoria and potentially a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak as well coming through on Monday afternoon and evening through parts of the central of central Victoria so again an interesting feature to watch that's going to do it for though for today's weather forecast update I've got the cyclone forecast coming out later this afternoon so make sure you are subscribed for that stick around for that as well coming out at 6 30 p.m Australian Eastern Standard Time uh, if you have enjoyed this forecast update then please you consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already lots more to come in the next few days in regards to these severe thunderstorms check out the Facebook page as well but that's going to do it for me today a special shout out to the channel sponsors their names are on screen right now and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.